Mark starts off with a wooded foothills. He cracks it to fetch an endothetrium and pass. I play a tapped tumble garden. Jeff plays a prismatic vista. He cracks it to fetch a swamp and to play. Will plays a godless shrine tapped. Mark plays a sun petal grove. Then he casts devoted druid and pass. I play a swamp and pass. Jeff plays Yavimaya Cradle of Growth and pass. Will copies Jeff. Then he casts Sterling Grove and pass. Mark casts Mana Gorgia Hydra. With that on the stack, Jeff casts Grizzly Salvage. He reveals Marsh Flats, Malakir Rebirth, Insidious Roots, High Market, and Ramunap Excavator. He puts the excavator in his hand and the rest into his graveyard. I play Reflecting Pool. Then I cast a fair Ashnod's Altar, putting a counter on Mana Gorgia. Jeff plays a Plains, then he casts the Ramunap Excavator, triggering Mana Gorger. Will plays Twilight Mire, then he casts Seder Enchanter and pass the turn. Mark casts Reclamation Sage, destroying my Ashnot's Altar. Even though I said it was fair, moving to combat, he sends the 5-5 Hydra at Jeff with no blocks. I start by playing a Swamp, then I cast Archon of Sun's Grace. Jeff plays High Market from his graveyard, then he casts one of his commanders, Tormod the Desecrator, and pass the turn. Will plays a Mana Confluence, then he casts Binding the Old Gods. He targets Mana Gorgia Hydra to destroy it and pass the turn from there. Mark plays a Plains, then he casts his commander, Tyam Luminous Enigma, and pass. I play City of Brass, then I cast Smothering Tithe. This triggers Archon and I make a Pegasus token. From there, I cast Birds of Paradise. Moving to combat, I send my Archon at Mark Unblocked, gaining 3 life. Jeff pays for Smothering Tithe, then he casts his own Birds of Paradise. After that, he plays Marsh Flats from his graveyard, he gets a zombie from his commander, then he casts Carrion Feeder and pass the turn. Binding the Old Gods goes up a chapter, and I make a treasure from Smothering Tithe. The land Will fetches is Underground Mortuary. He surveils, putting the card into his graveyard. Then he casts his own Archon of Sun's Grace and pass the turn. Taxes! Mark puts a minus one minus one counter on Devoted Druid to get two mana. Then he casts Takasia's Welcome. Takasia's Welcome. After that, Mark casts Illus Ilkor, Sadistic Pilgrim. That triggers Takasia's Welcome, and he draws, not paying his taxes. Ellis enters with the Vigilance counter, and Mark passes to me. I cast my commander, Merkel, Lord of Bones. Then I cast Land of War Elves. I move to my end step. On my end step, Jeff cracks his Marsh Flats. He fetches up a shadowy backstreet. He surveils, putting Life from the Loam into his graveyard. Starting his turn, he returns Life from the Loam to his hand and dredges three. Then he casts Rite of Oblivion. He sacks a zombie, and he chooses to exile Smothering Tithe with Rite of Oblivion. Then he casts Life from the Loam, returning three lands to his hand. This triggers Tormod, and he gets a zombie. Then he plays Prismatic Vista from his graveyard, triggering his commander, getting another zombie. He passes, discarding a land at end step. Binding the Old Gods goes to the last level. Will plays Vault of the Archangel. Then he sacrifices Sterling Grove to tutor for an enchantment. He tutors for Sithis Harvest Hand. He'll put her on top of his library. Then he casts Aura Shards. This triggers the Satyr, so he draws the Sithis. He'll also make a Pegasus token. Then he'll cast the Sithis he tutored for. He draws another card and destroys my treasure with his Aura Shards trigger. He destroys Mark's Takasia's Welcome with the other Aura Shards trigger. Moving to combat, he sends his Archon at me. I block it with my Archon and my Pegasus token to kill it. When my Archon dies, I choose to exile it with my commander's ability, returning it as an enchantment. Mark plays a Savannah, then he casts Luminous Broodmoth. It enters with the Vigilance counter. He untaps Devoted Druid, which kills it. It returns to the battlefield with a Flying counter and a Vigilance counter. Then he passes the turn. I'll play Vault of Champions. Then I cast Gisa, Glorious Resurrector. After that, I cast Sigarda, Font of Blessings, giving my permanents Hexproof. I move to combat, and Jeff sacks Prismatic Vista. He'll fetch four planes. I send Merkel at will. He blocks with a Pegasus token, and I'll pass from there. Mark dredges with Life from the Loam. He'll get another tap zombie token. Then he plays Phyrexian Tower. After that, he casts his other commander, Siddhar Kondo of Jamora. Moving to combat, he sends his three 2-2 two -two zombies at will that can only be blocked by creatures with flying or reach. Will takes the damage. Then Jeff casts Life from the Loam. He returns lands from his graveyard and gets another zombie before passing the turn. Will plays an Ancient Tomb, then he casts his commander, Anicthia, Hand of Erebos. On ETB, he draws a card from Sithis, and he draws a card from Seder. He returns Binding of the Old Gods with his commander's ETB. He targets Jeff's Sadar. Jeff responds by sacrificing it to Carrion Feeder, then Will casts Touch the Spirit Realm. On ETB, he exiles Mysagarda, and he passes from there. 
Mark plays a Marsh Flats. He cracks it to fetch a Scrubland. Then he casts Zulaport Cutthroat. It enters with the Vigilance counter. He taps Devoted Druid for 2 mana, putting a minus 1 minus 1 counter on it. He removes 3 counters from Devoted Druid with Time's ability. He puts Promise of Bunray, Aura Shards, and Finhorn Elves into his graveyard. He returns Mana Gorgia Hydra to play with the Vigilance counter on it and passes the turn. I'm going to cast Aura Shards of my own. On ETB, I get a Pegasus token. I choose to destroy Will's Touch the Spirit Realm with Aura Shards. My Sigarda comes back to play and I pass the turn. Forgetting an aura charge trigger there. Jeff dredges again, returning life from the loam to his hand and milling three cards. He gets another tap zombie token because life from the loam left his graveyard. He plays silent clearing. He'll sacrifice silent clearing to draw a card, instead choosing to dredge five with stinkweed imp that's in his graveyard. He returns it to his hand and gets another zombie. He'll mill five cards from there. Then he casts the previously milled grave crawler from his graveyard, getting another zombie. With that on the stack, Mark untaps Devoted Druid, putting a minus one minus one counter on it. Then he activates Tyam. He removes a counter from Devoted Druid. He removes a counter from Zulaport. He removes a counter from Ellis. Then he puts an Esper Sentinel, an Elves of Deep Shadow, and a Windswept Heath into his graveyard. He puts the Windswept Heath into play. Then Jeff continues his turn by sacrificing the Gravecrawler with Phyrexian Tower for two black mana. Gravecrawler is exiled thanks to my Gisa. After that, he recasts his commander, Siddhar. Moving to combat, he sends his 5 2 2 zombies at me. I block, killing one of them, and take 8 damage. He passes the will from there. Binding the old gods, advances to chapter 2. Will fetches underground mortuary, surveilling, leaving that card on top. Then he plays exotic orchard. After that, he casts flowering of the white tree. Managorja gets a counter. Will draws from his enchantress effects. Then he casts extinguish all hope to destroy all non-enchantment creatures. Mark responds by cracking the windswept heath and fetching godless shrine. I respond by casting Malakir rebirth targeting Merkle. All non-enchantment creatures are exiled thanks to my Gisa. I turn all my dying creatures into enchantments. When those enchantments ETB I get four 2-2 pegasus tokens. When the four pegasus tokens ETB I destroy Anakthea, Sithis, Will's aura shards, and flowering of the white tree. Will passes to Mark from there. Mark is going to cast Tribute to the World Tree. Then he casts Eternal Witness. He returns Wood of Foothills to play with the ETB. And it enters with two plus one plus one counters from Tribute to the World Tree. He'll crack the Wood of Foothills, fetching for a Temple Garden into play tapped. Then he passes to me. During my upkeep, I get Will's Sithis that my Gisa enchantment exiled. With Aura Shards, I destroy Mark's Tribute to the World Tree. Then I cast Belladros Witherbloom. Or charge triggers, and I destroy Will's binding the old gods. Moving to combat, I send Merkle at Will for 7 damage, and my 4 Pegasus tokens at Jeff for 8 life linking damage. Passing after that. On Jeff's upkeep, I get a pest. He dredges 5 with Stinkweed Imp, then he casts Damnation. I choose to make Belladros into an enchantment, giving me a Pegasus token. I should have also gotten a Sithis enchantment, but we catch that later. Jeff plays Marsh Flats and passes the turn. Will plays Shadowy Backstreet. He surveils a swamp to his graveyard. I get my pest during his upkeep. Then he casts Mesa Enchantress. After that, he casts Aura of Silence. He draws a card with Mesa Enchantress. Then he sacrifices Aura of Silence to destroy my Sigarda enchantment. He passes after that. Mark recasts his commander, Tyam, and pass the turn. I get Mark's Eternal Witness on my upkeep, returning Ashnot's Altar to my hand. Then I cast Black Market Connections. After that, I cast Ashnot's Altar. Thanks to Belladros, I pay 10 life to untap all of my lands. Then I recast my commander, Merkel, Lord of Bones. Moving to combat, I send 4 damage at will and move to my end step. Jeff cracks Marsh Flats and fetches a Surveil land, leaving the card on top. When the land ETBs, he returns Blood Gas to the battlefield. Then he plays Horizon Canopy. He sacks it to draw a card. Then he'll cast Stinkweed Imp. After that, he casts Life from the Loam. He returns 3 lands to his hand. Notably, one of them is Boseju who endures. He moves to discard and passes. Will plays and dot the Triome. Then he casts Demon of Fate's Design. He draws from Mesa Enchantress. After that, he casts Sinister Concoction. He'll draw another card. Then he sacrifices Sinister Concoction to destroy Merkel. In response, I sacrifice Eternal Witness, choosing to exile it and make an enchantment copy. This gives me a Pegasus token. I destroy Demon of Fate's Design on ETB. My commander dies, but I do return Malakir Rebirth to my hand. Lastly, Will casts Enchantress's Presence, drawing another card. 
I get a pest on Mark's upkeep, and I destroy Will's Enchantress's presence. Mark casts Champion of Lamholt. It enters with a Vigi counter. Then he casts Butcher Ghoul. He puts a counter on Champion of Lamholt and a Vigilance counter on the Butcher. During his end step, Jeff channels Boseju, destroying my Geese enchantment. I get to fetch for an Endotha Triome in the play tapped. I full send with Black Market, getting a treasure, a shapeshifter, and drawing a card. Then I cast Illustrious Wanderglyph. After that, I recast my commander, Merkle, by sacrificing 5 pests to Ashnot's altar and gaining 5 life. Then I play Overgrown Tomb. Moving to combat, I send another 6 damage at will and pass the turn. Jeff dredges with Life from the Loam. Then he recasts his commander, Tormod the Desecrator. He sacrifices Bloodgast using Phyrexian Tower. Then he plays a land. This triggers Bloodgast, returning it to the battlefield. His commander gives him a zombie token. Then he casts Rite of Oblivion with Flashback. He sacrifices Stinkweed Imp. His commander gives him another zombie. He exiles my Ashnod's altar and passes the turn. I'll get a pest, and I get another gnome. Then Will casts Andu Spirit Dancer. After that, he recasts his commander, Anicthia. He draws a card on ETB. Then he returns a creature version of Aura Shards to play. On ETB, he destroys my Aura Shards. Andu Spirit Dancer gives him a copy of Aura Shards. With that, he destroys my Belladros Witherbloom enchantment. The new Aura Shards triggers the old one, and he destroys my Archon of Sun's Grace enchantment. I get a Gnome and Mark's upkeep. Mark plays a forest. Then he removes three counters, activating Time's ability. He puts Knight of Autumn into play from his graveyard. It enters with two plus one plus one counters. Then he casts Abzan Ascendancy. He puts plus one plus one counters on his entire board. Then he passes the turn. I draw an extra card from Black Market Connections. Then I cast Nature's Lore. I fetch for a forest. Then I play a command tower. Moving to combat, I send everything at will to ensure I take him out of the game. I can't survive another round with two aura shards. Will blocks in a way to take out my two gnomes and my commander. I'll cast Malakir Rebirth to save my commander, and I'll pass the turn. Jeff starts by dredging with Stinkweed Imp. His commander gives him another zombie. Then he casts Life from the Loam. He gets another zombie. Then he returns three lands to his hand. He'll play Field of the Dead. He gets another zombie. Then he casts Stinkweed Imp again. From there, he passes the turn. Mark plays Flooded Strand. He cracks it to fetch up a Savannah into play. Then he casts Midnight Reaper. Champion of Lamholt gets bigger. Moving to combat, he sends 13 damage at me, which I can't block. I take the damage, and he passes the turn. I draw an extra card with Black Market again. Then I play Urza Saga. From there, I cast Chatterfang Squirrel General. I send 6 damage in the air at Mark with no blocks. During my end step, Jeff channels Boseju to destroy my illustrious Wanderglyph. With Merkel, I make it into an enchantment token. I also get a Squirrel token for making that token. Because of Boseju, I fetch a Plains and a play. Also, on my end step, Mark activates Tyam. He returns Aura Shards to play, milling three cards. Then he activates Tyam again, this time returning Wolstrider to play. I respond by sacrificing three squirrels, giving Champion of Lamholt plus three, minus three. He draws from the Midnight Reaper. Abs and Ascendancy gives him a spirit because a creature died. Wolstrider, a goat, and a spirit entered, so he gets three Aura Shards triggers. He destroys Black Market Connections, Illustrious Wanderglyph, and Chatterfang. Mark's creatures enter with Vigilance Counters, and the turn goes to Jeff. Jeff dredges with Stinkweed Imp. He gets a zombie and mills five cards. Then he casts a Burial Rites from his graveyard. He gets a zombie. He returns to play Illus Il Kor, Sadistic Pilgrim. Now, I won't say all the life gain triggers, but I don't think we missed any. Trust me, bro. Then he casts Loyal Retainers, gaining one from Illus. He sacrifices Loyal Retainers. He returns Junji the Midnight Sky to play, gaining a life. Getting a zombie, gaining a life. Using Phyrexian Arena, he sacrifices Junji. On death, he returns Loyal Retainers, gaining a life. Then he casts Phyrexian Altar. He sacrifices the Loyal Retainers, bringing back Junji. Then he sacks Junji, bringing back Loyal Retainers. He presents a loop where he can do this infinitely. Mark responds by sacrificing Butcher Ghoul to Wolstrider. He scries to the bottom. Butcher Ghoul returns from the Undying Trigger, and Mark destroys Phyrexian Altar while Lawyer Retainer's ability is on the stack. Junji enters the battlefield. Jeff gets a zombie and gains two life. Then he sacrifices Junji with his High Market. He chooses to return Karmic Guide, getting another zombie. Karmic Guide's ETB returns Ranger Captain of Eos, getting him another zombie token. Ranger Captain of Eos gets Viscera Seer to hand. He'll play Nurturing Peatland, then he casts the Viscera Seer. 
He sacrifices Bloodgast to Viscerous here. He'll scry to the bottom, draining the table for one. I forget to take the damage, but it doesn't impact the game at all. Mark starts his turn by casting Worldly Tutor. He tutors four Kitchen Finks to the top of his library. He activates Time's ability. He puts Kitchen Finks into play from the graveyard. Jeff sacrifices Ranger Captain, preventing us from casting non-creature spells this turn. I know what I just said, but Mark casts a Soul Ring. Then he activates Time again. He puts Good Fortune Unicorn into play, making his creatures enter with a plus one plus one counter. He activates Tyam one last time, returning Blood Artist to play. From there, he presents a loop where he can sacrifice Kitchen Finks. It has Persist, so it returns to play with a minus one minus one counter on it, if it doesn't have one. But it enters with a plus one plus one counter, which cancels out the minus one minus one counter. He can sacrifice infinitely, Draining the table out with Blood Artist triggers. Mark takes the game this week. The misplay was impactful, but this game was pushing into the three hour mark and we were all tired. Hope you enjoyed the gameplay. Till next time, I'll see you at the table.